Hello and welcome back to the Gaming Guild. Alex here and we have 7 days to die, but today we are going to be doing a walkthrough. Um, this is going to be how to survive your first week in 7 days to die. Um, so a little bit different than normal. Um, we raised our uh, experience up to 3 times the normal amount, uh, but we dropped our 24 hour cycle down to 10 minutes. Um, this is going to be a kind of a blitz of going through the first week. So um, to uh, compensate for how short my days are, I'm just giving myself a little bit of experience. Now, if you're playing Seven Days to Die uh, solo and you're struggling to uh, get through uh, your first week, uh, here's a few things that will really kind of make a big difference for you. I would highly recommend setting the speed of night uh, zombies, feral zombies, and blood moon zombies to jog. The difference between uh, some of these different speeds is critical. Um, especially when you're by yourself, it's really easy to get overwhelmed. And with jog, you don't have to worry too much about your stamina um, as far as being able to stay ahead of the zombies. Um, you'll be slower when you have to reload um, and when you do run out of stamina from melee attacks. Uh, but uh, there's a lot more survival in Jog. Uh, I'll be playing with Run just to show you guys a little bit uh, more. Sprint is okay, but um, at the beginning of the game, it's actually very uh, inadvisable if you're playing by yourself. Uh, because Sprint means that they can easily outrun you and... Uh, that's not good when you just don't have too many options. I don't have too much else set differently. Um, I have my death penalty off for this. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then I have some of my multiplayer settings. It really doesn't matter too much. Uh, but just so you guys can all see what's going on there. So, let's get into this. Now, as you're starting your game, you're going to have a lot more time than I have. Um, as you can see, my timer is just flying, um, so it's going to be nighttime before I know it. So I'm just going to grab some uh, quick supplies here at the beginning. Iron doesn't help. That. Um, so yeah, some of the basic supplies that you're going to start out with is uh, rocks, wood, and... Uh, plant fiber. Um, so you're going to be needing a few different things. Um, looks like I need more stones. There we go. That's stone axe. So if you press the Y button, you can see your list of challenges. Um, you get some experience for them and it kind of just helps you learn uh, the beginning of the game. this stuff around a bit. So you can see in the top right, it wants me to just gather some materials. That's good. Let's chop down one tree. And then we'll make all of our stuff. So the game wants you to make some basic equipment at the very beginning. It makes wants you to make a stone axe, a primitive bow, a wooden club, uh, arrows, and uh, a primitive outfit. Now we'll highlight it with this little symbol here, um, but you can make them in any order. Um, so let's get the wooden club. Let's get... Oh. Many of those that I can get. Uh, and then I have to put on the outfit. that okay once you've cleared all of your top row here 
uh, you get the marker for where your trader is. Uh, most maps it should be fairly close by. Um, but I have seen some maps where it's a little bit further away. Um, now here's a good thing. So keep an eye out for stumps. Um, stumps are very good. They have a chance to have honey inside of them. Uh, honey acts as an antibiotic. Um, so if uh, you get infected, uh, you can... Uh, Try to get that chicken. Um, if you get infected um, from getting bitten by a zombie, um, you can take the honey and uh, get rid of that infection. Already getting pretty close to the end of the day. Now, normally you would have a lot more time in this. Um, if you're uh, trying this game out if you're watching this walkthrough to get some help. I do not recommend 10 minute days um, I would stick with the default uh, one hour um, If you're a little worried about time uh, getting burnt out on the game go to 30 minutes. Uh, it's still a lot of fun um, But uh, Just yeah 10 minutes is not a lot of time well, now that you did the job, I so the guess first time you, you come to the trader, bad after all. he's going to give you a shovel, which is kind of weird. Uh, but he's going to give you a special job if to go dig up some buried me, supplies. Well, don't just stand there uh, come given how mess, little time we have, we're going to do this overnight. Uh, but normally you'd be able to meet the trader, go do this buried supplies, get back. It's all in one day. Um, everything's fine. Uh, but because we're short on time... We are going to quickly loot. Uh, since the 1.0 update, Trader Wrecked is the first trader that you meet. So this layout's always going to be the same. Um, it's going to be Trader Wrecked. It's going to be this location. Um, all of the uh, things that you can find are the same spots. Sometimes the trucks are in good condition. Sometimes they're in bad condition. Uh, but for the most part, everything's sick. I just picked up an anvil. That is extremely rare. Huh. Oh, well, only in a walkthrough. Uh, if you find something like that, that is, could be a huge game changer. Um, we're probably not going to get to the point of even using the anvil in this walkthrough. Um, just because we're not going to get a forge. Um, we have some houses right here, little cabins, going very quick because we're almost out of time. This, that's good. Mint mixer. Trade Erect is closing shortly, so finish your damn business or come back tomorrow, if you're still alive. Trade Erect is now closed. So get off my lawn. Ooh. This is annoying. This is a heavy. Um, what I mean by heavy is that they have uh, more health. Um, they just last a little bit longer in a fight. We're going to do our best against him. And the more you play, the more you can, like, read a zombie's movement to know when he's attacking. Um, and just try to, like, keep moving backwards, stay out of his range. Um, let's see, I'm going to make some more arrows, because arrows are uh, pretty important at the beginning of the game. Um, you'll see me go out of my way to try to kill a chicken, uh, just because you can carve them up and get some uh, extra feathers that way.
Now, what you're seeing me do is a pretty common tactic. Um, shooting a zombie, weaken them, and then uh, switch into your melee weapon to finish them off is pretty important. Um, especially at night when they're just sprinting on you. Um, you really kind of need to do whatever you can just to uh, keep them at bay. So one of the things we're going to make is a bone knife. This isn't too important for overall survival, but it's a good way to get uh, materials off of uh, rotting corpses and things like that. And something we haven't done yet, I'll do really quick, is our skill points. When you finish the tutorial, that first line um, of your challenges here, um, you automatically get four skill points. Um, and then every time you level up, you get another one. Um, so I'm going to give you guys some advice on the first four that you should take. Minor 69er. This lowers the stamina cost and increases block damage uh, for all of your tools. I suggest cardio because this is going to allow you to uh, run faster and your re uh, not run faster, but have your stamina regenerate faster. I'm going to take that. I highly recommend a point in archery because you really rely on a bow early on. And then I suggest hidden strikes, because as you saw, I was doing a 3.5 times multiplier uh, for my sneak attacks. And um, each point of hide in the shadows increases it by 0.5. So there, I just did four times sneak attack damage. Um, and on the standard difficulty, that can be pretty good at killing most easy zombies. Um, these construction workers or utility workers have extra defense, so they're a little trickier to deal with. Um, where's my shovel? Um, so yeah, those are the first one, uh, first skills that I recommend you getting. Um, really just helps with survivability, getting through the beginning of the game. From there, a lot of the points that I would recommend is actually towards raising your overall agility to four. Um, and then after that, getting two levels of parkour. The first level doesn't help too much, uh, but the second one is where it really gets good. So right now I can jump a meter high. Uh, so that's just one block. It's not much. It's all the zombies can jump one meter high. Um, whatever. Uh, once you get parkour level two, you can jump two meters high. And what that really comes down to is you can jump up onto walls that zombies cannot. Um, zombies are able to kind of piggyback on each other and get up walls that way, but it's a very difficult for them. Uh, it takes a lot of effort. So parkour can drastically change uh, the way you can survive in this game. We can try to do this, buried supplies, go turn it in, and take a mission. Uh, the missions don't matter nearly as much for this walkthrough, which is why I'm doing such a sped up version uh, right now. Uh, another thing, if you have the skill points to spare, I would recommend uh, Treasure Hunter. Uh, normally, it takes 10 blocks to reduce this circle uh, for your buried supplies quests, and uh, taking one level will drop that down to seven so every seven times you dig a hole you know dig a spot out it will shrink um, this first one is a tutorial so it automatically shrinks a lot faster um, but some of your other buried supplies missions um, it's just nice to have that uh, treasure hunter to kind of speed things up a bit we're not having great luck Sometimes it's like you dig two spots and you find it. Um, this one's being a little trickier. And you always want to try to keep an ear out for zombies approaching.
And then whenever you finish a buried supplies, it always uh, spawns zombies. In the case of the tutorial, it just spawns this one. Let's run back. If you notice, we're also kind of getting weighed down uh, by our stuff. Um, so we'll take care of that in just a second. There aren't a lot of buildings around, which is a little concerning because we do want some kind of base for our Blood Moon. Um, and we might start looking around and just not care about jobs too much. Prove me wrong. Damn, okay, so after this like tutorial dead. dig, he gives you, you the option money. of a weapon. Um, you get a little bit of ammo, you get a quality one uh, pipe weapon. Um, we are going to go with the... I usually go with a rifle. I think in this case we're going to go with a shotgun. Um, and then... Boy, everything is pretty far away. Let's make a pack. Duncan Denison's. So that's just like a, a little campsite. Or you better take this job. Mercy I'm not Point move Camp. More of your bullshit. Okay, it's we'll take that one. Disappoint me, and you'll find yourself on the wrong end. Of we a might road. not end up doing this job. And normally, you'd have enough time in your first week that you can do all the tier one jobs you need to reach tier two. Um, if you've seen any of my videos, or really um, almost anybody's videos. You know that at the end of your tier one jobs, you get rewarded a bicycle, at least as one of the options. Um, and that's really good for getting around. I definitely recommend when you're playing this, take the time, do the jobs, um, try to earn that bicycle if you can. Let's make some more arrows. Let's get that shotgun out. Um, we're also starting to get low on food and water. Um, let's eat some of that. Uh, when your food gets low, your max stamina decreases. When your water gets low, the rate at which you recover stamina decreases. Um, so you really just want to keep both of those high. Um, if I had to pick one over the other, I'd rather stay hydrated and be hungry because the stamina cap isn't too bad. Uh, but if you get thirsty, that slow stamina regen uh, can be pretty drastic. Ooh, I just got a honey. bedtime yeah a honey uh can cure infection so you really want to try if you can uh, keep an eye out for stumps destroy them when you see them and just hope that you get a a honey relatively soon Take just a second, look at my challenges. So you'll randomly be unlocking challenges as you go along. You can focus on a particular one and try to knock it out, or you could just uh, get them as they come. Um, but they give you a little bit of experience. Um, so you see, I just gained another level there. And yeah, I do have the triple experience on right now, um, but they do really help towards you leveling up, especially early on in the game. I know we got one honey, but we're going to try for a second one. 
Hey, we got a second one. Make sure our shotgun is loaded. As you can see, it takes a while to load this shotgun. So, um, one of the things that I like to put a point into, I'm still trying to keep in mind, I want points in agility, I want the parkour, uh, but we want some survivability as well. I'm going to take a point of run and gun. This will just make it so I reload a little bit faster, have a little bit more speed while I'm reloading. Because um, you start moving pretty slow during your reload animation. But we have the shotgun now. Um, making some arrows. We have some reliable uh, ammunition for a bow. That's not good. Now, with melee weapons, I am power attacking with my right mouse button and doing a normal swing with my left mouse button. Uh, power attacks take a lot of stamina, but if you saw there, I used a power attack and then uh, he fell on the ground. And that just gave me a chance to really you know, wall upon him a bit. Okay, um, this is a pretty interesting tier one location because it's how big it is. We're going to go ahead and do this. So this is a fetch quest. So we see the little fetch icon um, back there somewhere is the case that we're picking up. Um, during a fetch quest, you cannot see uh, zombies on your compass. Um, you'll get little red dots uh, when zombies show up. Uh, but only if it's a clear quest. Um, when it's just uh, fetch, I can see the icon for the case that I'm picking up, but that's it. So I'll just need to kind of keep my ears about me, um, watch my back, know that everything that I go into is probably going to have a zombie in it. And they like to hide, so right around the corner, zombie. And until you see the experience pop up in the bottom right, you did not kill the zombie. Just pop this food in really quick. Chemistry station, we want to check that. matter too much. Ooh, a bookcase. That's good. Gain five more experience from kills at night. Handy. Not too handy right now, but in the long run it can really help out a lot. There, a power attack uh, knocked her to the ground. Oh my god. Okay, it only shows up in a walkthrough. This is insane. So, there's something called a toilet pistol. It is a quality one pistol, and it only shows up. Um, I mean, it shows up in toilets, not only toilets. Um, it's usually damaged like that. Um, this is insanely good um this is a tier two weapon so tier one weapons are your pipe uh firearms uh the pipe pistol is a really bad uh revolver um, and uh, this pistol is like Guarant almost guarantees me surviving the first blood moon. It's it's disgusting that I have been playing so much lately and then just found a toilet pistol in the first toilet that I checked in the walkthrough video that I'm doing for you guys. 
Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, toilets have a chance of having a pistol in them. They're quality one. They're damaged. Later on in the game, it, it's almost like, oh, of course I'd come across a pipe uh, toilet pistol because they're just they're not good. Uh, but when you're in your first week, they are one of the best things you can find. Uh, especially because the 9mm ammo that they use um, is readily available. Um, you're going to find more of that ammo than any other ammo. Um, we're still going to be careful with it. We're not going to just start... What is that sound? I mean, it's a zombie, but... start getting overwhelmed it's just time to switch to your uh good weapons i have no idea what's trying to get in right now okay just too crazy. Okay. I only have a few shotgun shells, but um, I don't want to go through all of my uh, arrows trying to take these guys out. Scrap that. So I actually prefer the uh, spear over a club. Um, and I'll show you why in just a second. That made. So spears can better hit through small openings. So they kind of, you know, made a window for me. So I can use that to my advantage. Uh, to just stab him through it, uh, where the club would actually, like, get hit on stuff and kind of be a problem. All right, well... Let's finish this off. I think we're almost done here. And again, it's, like, only in a, uh, really enough for toilet pistol. Uh, only in a walkthrough um, to be like the description for this video uh, is only in this walkthrough uh, am I finding just the best drops possible. Um, this is just crazy. Um, let's eat this food. So when you start running out of space for things, um, just quickly eating or drinking um, some supplies you have is a good way to just quickly consume it, get it out of your inventory. Um, I can't believe we found two pistols. Let's see what's up here. Oh, it's a loot stash. Yeah. Um, every location has a loot stash at the end. Um, I was just so preoccupied with everything else. I completely forgot that I was here. Um, so it's just kind of your chance to get some rewards for getting through everything. 
a pipe machine gun. Okay. Um, I'm going to take that. Um, I'm going to leave some stuff behind that we really don't need in this uh, walkthrough. Normally, I try to take as like all the supplies. Like, I don't want to leave anything behind, uh, but that's not going to matter too much uh, today. Especially with everything that we already have. Um, that doesn't matter. More honey. Okay. Do we have... Some ammo, not too much. Um, I want to, I'm going to do modify and what modifying this does, um, besides being able to put things on it, it unequipped all the bullets that was in it. Um, so that way I don't accidentally like sell it to the trader and have all my bullets. Um, in it. cause that would be bad to sell 15 bullets right now. This guy's going to be a little problematic. Oh, there's two of them. Three of them. game was like, okay, you're doing too good. We have to throw something at you that's going to slow you down. Um, yeah, well, let's uh, start heading back. We'll be moving slow because of all the stuff we have. Uh, but from here on, we really just want to find a base. Um, and honestly, at this point, we could probably just start making our own base. Um, I'll kind of show you uh, all that you really need to survive at least in the early uh weeks or like your first few blood moons because later on you're gonna get um you're, you're gonna get birds you're gonna get uh, a lot of jumping zombies you're gonna get uh, police zombies that can uh throw up on you um which is like a ranged attack uh you're gonna get dogs which um are just fast and uh, attack very quickly. I have a second. I look at my skills, so I have quite a few skills points saved up. So I'm just going to go ahead and start buying um, some of the stuff I need to get to parkour. If you've seen some of my other videos, um, okay, this is really good, but I just don't need it for this because it's a rocket launcher part. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know I have like an entire hotbar full of uh, weapons, and basically I have one of every kind of weapon. Um, the main reason I do that is I don't know what situation I'm going to encounter zombies in, especially when I'm by myself. If it's far away, I deal with it far away. If it's up close, I deal it with it up close. I don't have a lot of options to change how I'm going to handle a threat. So having all sorts of different guns uh, gives me the tr chance to just change things up. Um, and so with that, it's like, okay, I have you no know, a pistol for when I have a... Um, 
small, you know, small group, and I really just want to try to get some headshots off. I have a machine gun for when something big with a lot of HP is right in front of me. I really want to whittle it down. I have a shotgun when I have a small opening, and I really just wanted to shoot and hope that I, you know, clear the area. Right now, my bow is kind of picking off smaller targets uh, at a distance, helping me out there. Ooh, supply drop. Where are you dropping? Wow, that's really close. Thank you. Everything else, and we get a small uh, or a short distance uh, supply drop. This is this is such a crazy walkthrough. So normally that spawns within you know, roughly 500 meters of wherever you currently are at the time that the airdrop shows up. Um, sometimes it's like way out of your way. Hey, sometimes you it's along the path. Now, don't you? Kind of hard to control. What the hell do you want this time? Um, let's sell that extra pistol. Um, I'm as much as I want to. I'm not going to sell the anvil. Uh, let's let's see what else I can sell. We're not going to make any armor. I'm not going to use that. All right. Well, look here, boys. We got ourselves a real life hero, and now. He wants uh, we're gonna go ahead and just take this magazine and see what other jobs he has. I got work to do if you don't you got and some balls coming in here and turn He has a down. lot of stuff pretty far away. Um, we'll go ahead and take this buried supplies. Standing there for? Don't you have work to uh, do? But it seems like the nearby town um, that's like the forest town that he's associated with is pretty far away uh, up here. Um, so we're just not going to find anything good for uh, a base around here. Let's quickly go through and repair these. Because those are just kind of my staples. Um, and they just take wood to repair, so it's pretty quick. I think it might take stone as well. We're going to head over to this airdrop, see what we can get. Usually it's some pretty good stuff. Quick snack break. Feathers. And something you might have noticed with the feathers, I'm also finding eggs occasionally. Um, if you read enough cooking magazines, uh, you can eventually learn how to make bacon and eggs, which is one of the better... I, at least I feel like one of the better recipes that you can make. Um, it just takes a little bit of meat and uh, I think two eggs. And you can make bacon and eggs. It recovers a lot of uh, food loss. That's good. Um, it's all really good. Wow. That was just fantastic. Well, let's read that. Uh, let's make some more arrows. I'm just clearing up her inventory here. There's some cooking magazines. Nothing great. Nothing great. Nine millimeters degrade slower, so at least my pistol will last a little bit longer. Okay. Not too bad of a airdrop. A big horde of zombies over there. And it's almost nighttime. I really don't want to deal with them. They're all moving quickly. Yeah, you'll occasionally run into that. Like, you'll see the occasional zombie here and there. Um, pick them off as you see them. Uh, but every once in a while, they'll spawn in a group of zombies. And in this case, you can see there's like six, probably seven of them um, all moving kind of together. They're all really moving in my direction. Um, and now that it's night, they're going to be moving faster. I really want to get ahead of them.
And something if you didn't realize this uh, in your own game about traders, uh, traders lock their doors at night. Um, and then if you're actually inside the traders when they lock up, you get kicked out and um, it can be a little jarring the first time it happens. Ooh, deer. If I can kill this deer. The deer, um, like most wild animals uh, that aren't zombified, uh, deer can give you uh, fresh meat as well as like uh, some other crafting supplies, uh, bones, leather, animal fat. Uh, but the meat is really what you want to kill animals for. Um, it just kind of helps with uh, cooking up some food. Uh, and then another thing that uh, animals, like dead animals like that could be useful for. If you have zombies nearby and you see a wild animal, you could kill the wild animal and the zombies will run to it to try to eat it. And then if you had like a pipe bomb or a molotov, you can throw it right at them because they're all bunched together. Um, as so far in this game, I haven't really seen it that useful. Um, used it a couple times just to distract a zombie while I was you know, trying to line up a uh, headshot or something. Uh, but I've never been able to pull multiple zombies in to uh, blow them up or anything. Okay, orange eyes. This is a feral. And what a feral is, um, is a zombie with more health. Um, they'll move faster, even during the daytime. But even though it was uh, morning, that one was still moving fast because it was a feral. Um, but yeah, feral zombies, they move faster, they hit harder. I think they're more likely to infect you, but that might just be because they're faster and have a chance of uh, getting a hit on you a little bit uh, faster. Um, it's really hard to sneak around them. Um, and they're more common at night, which I always kind of found weird. It's like, why have the chances of there being a feral zombie go up just because it's nighttime? Uh, but it's just part of the game. Um, barrels can quickly ruin your day. Um, so as you see, I like switched to my shotgun, didn't even bother reloading, just took the free shot that I had with the shotgun and kept going. Um, you know, even though I have such limited ammo with my pistol and uh, pipe machine gun, it's like, nope, I need to switch to them need to deal with that threat um you can see i'm kind of injured let's take a second i'm gonna eat some food yeah let's eat that i'm gonna save this until my uh water is a little bit lower And I'm kind of moving slow because I have so much stuff on me. Um, here pretty soon we'll really just stop, uh, make a base, and uh, I'll take all my supplies off. Oh, there's another horde. So many are spawning. Of 
Why are you guys change directions to go towards me? So usually a horde like that will pick a direction and they'll just go that direction. Um, they never really change their direction unless they spot you. Um, if I felt like I had more ammo and stuff, I'd definitely take them on. It's good experience. Uh, but right now, um, it's just a little dangerous. It's dangerous enough that I have, you know, one of these guys with tons of health. Like, even with that times four, he just has a lot of health remaining. Finally got him. Um, I think it's time that I take uh, one of my bandages. Uh, they help they heal back 30 health. Um, I was low enough that it's like, okay, I'm actually utilizing it. Um, let's have that. Have that. Some skill points to spend. Let's do the other parkour. And we'll do another archery. These buried supplies, uh, I like to just aim for the center of the circle. I just start getting down, kind of create a good opening hole. And then by the time the first um, section of the, uh, you know, segment of the circle, like, shrinks down, and you kind of get a better idea of where it is, uh, then I start heading in a direction while already underground. Open this up a little bit. And so every time it does that little ding, um, the circle shrinks and zombies have a chance to spawn. It's not guaranteed that they'll spawn, but there's a pretty good chance. There they are. And as soon as I pick this up, zombies will sh uh, start to spawn. So I'm actually going to eat that, and then pick up the rest and jump up. Where are you? So quick. Especially because I have two per points into my uh, archery right now. Uh, getting headshots has a decent enough chance of uh, just outright killing zombies. That I really want to try to take that extra second to line up uh, each hit of mine. Start heading back. Um... With how fast time is moving right now, I'm not going to make it back to Wrecked uh, before he closes. Uh, we'll just uh, get him when he uh, opens up in the morning. Uh, and then we'll head over and just kind of choose a good spot of open land to build a little base.
It's bedtime. And since I'm not in a rush, I'm just going to be crouched the entire time by heading back. Because, especially with us seeing that horde earlier of seven zombies or six zombies running by, I really don't want them to spot me. And like earlier with the feral, uh, I had to switch to my gun because it's a feral. Um, my spear and bow weren't going to be enough to take it out. Um, firing a gun just alerts all the zombies in the area to you. Um, so if like there's a horde running by and one of them's a feral and spots me and starts charging at me, even if the others don't see me, uh, the second I have to pull out my gun to defend myself, the other zombies are going to hear it and um, going to make things a lot worse. There's a deer up there. Stopped. Now, this game does have silencers, uh, so if you throw a silencer on a gun, it really helps out um, with like firing it at night, um, inside, just keeping you from alerting too many zombies around you, uh, but it's not perfect. Um, you can still alert zombies with it. Uh, however, the bow is like super silent. Um, I think they have it programmed that zombies just do not hear you if you use a bow. Um, they can still hear you like your footsteps or um, anything else that you're doing movement wise, uh, but they just can't hear you shooting a bow. I think the same goes for the crossbow. So they're just like really reliable for stealth. Fog coming in. Let's see. And every time you complete a row of challenges here, um, whatever trader you go talk to next will have a special bonus for you. So if you're, you know, you have the extra time, you're kind of struggling to get jobs done. Uh, going to the different points of interest and you know clearing out zombies or fetching supplies or anything like that um, instead you can focus on your challenges um, and well, still get some pretty nice rewards from need. it um, we're gonna take this nine millimeter ammo because uh, that's gonna be uh, pretty big i'd love to take really both of these uh, pipe bombs are amazing crafting skill magazines great uh, but we need the ammo right now. Um, everything here sucks. Look quick, buy quicker, piss off fastest. Um, he usually doesn't have too much good stuff in supplies. We also don't have very much money. Um, oh wow, times to scope. That would have been so nice. But even if I sold everything that I have, I don't think I could get that. Oh, We're gonna skip it. I don't even know why I open the doors. Uh, eggs are still worth five food. So if like you're hungry and you've been picking up a lot of eggs, feel free to uh, scarf one down. Uh, you just never want to eat honey uh, for its food value. Uh, it's just a, a little too valuable as an antibiotic. Um, you want it to remove your infection. Uh, you don't really want it to fill up your food gauge. I think if you're at the point where you're 
the only way to survive is to eat honey for food, I think you've almost lost the game at that point. Uh, we actually were playing multiplayer one time, and one of our friends uh, took our stack of honey and just started downing it because he thought it was food. Um, didn't realize that uh, we <laughs> were saving it so that we could, you know, cure ourselves of infection. Alright, so I was kind of coming over here um, just to see if there are any, like, buildings or anything. Not really. Uh, if you notice in the top right corner, uh, it says I'm in the burnt forest and there's like a uh, half orange skull. Uh, that means the difficulty in the area is increased by uh, half a skull. Um, when we go to a location, a location has so many, a certain number of skulls. Uh, in the case of like the camp that we went to um, to get some supplies. That was just a one star, one skull location. Um, nothing in there was supposed to be too difficult. Um, and so like now if I went to that same location, but inside of the burnt forest, it would be one and a half skulls difficult. Um, it just increases the number of zombies that could be there. What types of zombies are there? Um, it also increases the potential drops, so it is beneficial to go there uh, for supplies. Uh, but it just makes everything a lot harder. Uh, and that's just the burnt forest. Uh, the desert is a full, like one skull more difficult. The snow is one and a half. And then the wasteland is two skulls more difficult. Um, so you want to be very careful before just wandering into the wasteland because uh, just existence in the wasteland is deadly. So I think I'm just going to start um, setting up here. Uh, we have a little bit of time for uh, our blood moon. Uh, I'm going to make 20 of these. And these are just like placeable blocks. Um, let's scrap my shovel for now. I don't need it. And then let's make... Uh, what do we got? Iron storage? No. Where's my wooden storage? Oh, there it is. Wooden storage. Make two of those. that. Um, let's go that and sure I'll place you guys a bit like that. Dropping some of this material. Save you. Save you. Bring you down. So, we have these placeable blocks. We can pick them back up. Um, at least while they're in this form, we can pick them back up. As soon as we upgrade them, and I'm just uh, using the right mouse button um, with my axe, now that they're wooden blocks, I can't pick them back up. do not have enough wood. Um, so, I'm going to cut down a few trees here. Um, just get some more wood. 
Uh, I'm crouching while I do it uh, because it does dampen the sound that I make just on the off chance that a zombie's walking by and I didn't notice. Um, it just gives me a little bit more security and it's not like there's no penalty to uh, crouching while I do this. I kind of wish that they would make a penalty for it. Um, but they just don't. I just want to keep an eye out because um, we're doing pretty good right now uh, but if things could very quickly uh, go bad if some ferals show up if a horde comes running by uh, especially if it's a horde that has like some high health zombies the fatter zombies have more health um, you've seen the ones with like the uh, big hoods on um, they kind of, like, move their arms around a lot as they're walking. Uh, like, um, they got an attitude. Or like that. So, I don't know how they missed me. Um, that is incredible. And again, I'm pretty silent if I'm using my bow. Um, so I'm just trying to pick off a couple of the ones with low health. I'd go after that one, but she'd survive. Um, and I'm also like kind of looking. I don't see any with uh, orange eyes. So I'm not too concerned about hitting a feral, luring it over, and then, you know, ruining my day. Oh, that one survived. He's going to start running over. Okay. It's already almost morning. Um, so it is now Blood Moon Day. At about 8 o'clock, um, the timer at the top, or my clock, uh, will switch to red uh, to indicate that uh, a Blood Moon's occurring tonight. But we just kind of want to get done with this uh, base building uh, before nightfall. And luckily... Um, our Blood Moon is going to go super fast. I would slow it down you know, for the sake of the walkthrough. Um, but again, because I haven't had time to really build up my supplies, I kind of need a fast Blood Moon to uh, survive. Let's keep going on this. And again, because of my parkour level 2, uh, I'm able to jump this two-block high wall. Zombies can't. Uh, they can piggyback off, off of each other um, and get too high. Uh, but it's tricky for them to do that, uh, especially this early in the game. Um, they're Even though it's like the Blood Moon and they're super aggressive, they're still not aggressive enough. To really do a whole lot of uh, jumping on each other's backs and uh, getting up to me. 
five, six, eight, two more. And really, this base is just kind of silly. Um, if you're playing this, go find a house, um, anything really, uh, to build your base out of. I'm just showing you that you really don't need anything to make a base. Um, you know, I just have a tree here. Um, I don't even need the tree. I could just make it out in the grass and, you know, everything's going to be fine. Um... The importance is knowing what you can do during the Blood Moon to keep yourself alive. And that's where we're going to be going over here in just a second uh, when the Blood Moon actually starts. Um, double check my guns really quick. Um, let's make a few more building blocks. That should be good. So what I'm going to do here is... Come out a little bit. And I don't have too much rocks. I have an airdrop over there. I'm not going to worry about it this time. It's too far for me to get there and back in time. Um, normally I'd say, yeah, like, always go for that airdrop. That airdrop can be such a big lifeline. Um, I haven't seen it in 1.0, but, uh, in pre-release or early access, um, I've seen good weapons, uh, in the airdrop. I think I've seen an AK-47 in there before. Um, that can, like... That airdrop can be so good at just, like, the clutch moment for you. Um, and especially if you have it set to the default airdrops every three days. The first one's day four. The second one is day seven. Your day seven airdrop could be the difference of you making it through the Blood Moon or not. Uh, so anyways, um, I'm going to go to resources. We're going to make some cobblestone. Um, I want... Uh, 49 more. Let's start crafting that. Um, these really quick. So I had uh, 31 cobblestone. Just made 49 more, so I have 80. I'm going to upgrade each of these. That's 10 more or 10 cobblestone per. So for week one, your first blood moon, this is all the defense you need. Um, quite literally, it's your four blocks up. You have parkour too, so you can make the jump. Even if a zombie were to piggyback and they get up here, the zombie that piggybacked up here doesn't have another zombie down below to do it again um you're not right at the edge you can come back a bit um you know if i was right at the edge here a zombie could be right here and come up and smack my feet um, but if i can move back a little bit there's nothing they they could do i can take a shot with my bow i could switch to my spear i can just shoot him with my pistol deal with that one zombie Go back to just clearing the rest um, with my bow, or however else I'm going to do it. So that being said, um, we have all of our supplies. Um, we're going to take our repair kit with us, because as soon as my pistol breaks, this repair kit is going to get consumed uh, when I go to repair it. I'm going to take one honey. Um, if we get bit... And I get infected. I'm going to want that honey. Uh, we have our first aid bandages on us. Um, my food and water is a little low. Um, I don't have any water to drink right now. 
Um, can take a couple eggs. And then one big downside, and I can show you guys um, really quick here, to like the lack of time um, that we have in the game. So there's a campfire. Um, it takes 50 seconds to bake a potato, uh, 50 seconds to boil some water to make it clean, like taking the murky water and make it clean. Um, that 50 seconds is like a tenth of the day. Uh, so. There's really just no time to make anything when you only have, you know, 10 minutes a day. Um, so yeah, we're into the blood moon. Uh, it's going to go pretty quickly because, again, the time of day. Um, but we're just going to kind of let zombies show up. And it's set so that only eight zombies can uh, spawn during the blood moon. Now they're going to go for... Let me grab the clay. They're going to go for the cobblestone uh, blocks mostly because they want to get two meat. Um, I'm going to actually just use up the rest of my rocks and make a little bit more cobblestone. Oh, that was annoying. Okay, so they destroyed the wood uh, faster than I was expecting. Um, so, we are going to go over here. For some reason I can't jump. Why can't I jump? Okay. Oh, because I got a concussion. That's right. So again, why? One of the reasons why you don't want sprint. Um, so. If we had sprint on for the zombies, uh, they would be moving a lot faster. Um, and then it would be almost impossible to stay ahead of them. As it is, I kind of see all of the zombies uh, for our blood moon. We keep beating them ahead of me. Basically, one of the tricks that I was going to show you, if it wasn't for um, all that, was you can kind of sit up here and just repair blocks um, as the zombies show up um, and start you know, breaking things down. surviving the blood moon uh, um, we have the honey for the infection um, I because of that concussion I can't jump um, should have grabbed these painkillers earlier um, but painkillers get rid of concussion and then oh look I can jump again um, yeah that was just very unfortunate that um, you know they destroyed the block without me noticing and then all of a sudden they were there they hit me, and I immediately got infected in a concussion. Um, but again, uh, some of your most basic skills, having uh, parkour, um, having cardio, really just kind of helped me you know, stay ahead of the zombies. Um, I wasn't 
even with the concussion, I wasn't at risk of losing my stamina uh, while they were chasing me. I was getting ahead, taking a, a moment of rest, get my stamina back, take a couple shots at some of the faster zombies. Um, but really just like trying to stay in control, managing things as best I can. And really for the most part, this still worked. Um, I was just being funny, jumped down, was dealing with zombies. Um, you know, if you had more time, you'd make all of these cobblestone. And then that problem never would have happened. Um, I was just limited on my resources because I only had so many rocks. I only had so many, so much wood. Um, and yeah, the blood moon would have been a lot longer, but I would have been better prepared. But yeah, that's really how you survive uh, your first week in Seven Days to Die. I'm sure there's plenty of other methods that you could use. Um, it's in multiplayer, you would have a completely different strategy. Uh, but just solo, self-sufficient, uh, minimum supplies. This is going to help you survive. Now, obviously later on, even by the third Blood Moon, this isn't going to hold up. You're going to get... Uh, police zombies that can vomit on you um, with ranged attacks. Uh, you're going to get birds that start showing up. Um, you really want to get better weapons. Um, we got so lucky with this toilet pistol. Uh, but even then, you just want to start getting better weapons as soon as you can. And that's the main reason that you do the jobs. Uh, those jobs, progressively as they get better... You start unlocking um, more locations. Those locations have better and better loot at the end of them. On top of the reward that you get from the traders, um, it's all very progressive through the game. This map, however, is lousy. Um, starting off um, with no buildings around is just really bad. Um, and we don't need to go into it too much here. I talk about a lot more uh, in my actual playthroughs. Uh, but this pre-generated map is is just bad. Um, in 1.0, you only have one of each trader. I, at least on the small maps. Uh, the bigger maps might be different. But, you know, for the forest, you have trader wrecked. So, like, for him to be here and not to have any other buildings around... Uh, it's just really rough. Anyways, um, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. I hope you got some information out of it. Um, and uh, just have a little bit better of a plan of how you're going to survive uh, your zombie apocalypse. Uh, but if you have any questions, please comment them. I would love to answer them for you. Uh, but yeah, I will see you all in the next adventure. Bye-bye.